I live in Colorado. You've heard me say this a lot, and I love it. But there are days when it's quite hot. And in the summertime, we have some hot, hot days, but aren't we glad? And everybody thinks Colorado is so cold. It is cold some, but not a lot. And so I enjoy living here. And I enjoy getting this opportunity to minister to you. Now listen what it is. It's very important. The power of the mantle. Now when you think mantle, do you think Elijah? Do you think Elisha? But not just that. I want to start you a little earlier. Moses laid hands on Joshua. So let me read the verse to you. So give me a minute here. And believe me, this won't be dull. You will like it. Deuteronomy 31, 7 through 8 says, Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with the people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be discouraged and don't be afraid. So, you know, Moses is preparing them for the mantle that he had for them. And I believe that this mantle is very important because you say, well, I'm, I'm not in that crowd. I'm not in that Old Testament crowd. But you are in a special crowd. So just stay right there. You're going to like this. Elijah dropped his mantle and Elisha responded. Now, watch, 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 watch. What happened? Elijah had taken his mantle and hit the river and it divided and he walked over. So, Elisha thinks, well, if it works for him, it'll work for me. So, when he gets the mantle, he does the same thing. And so, we see that anointings are mantles and they come on people for purpose. And I believe every born again Christian has a mantle. And every born-again Christian has a purpose. You're not an accident. You're a divine appointment. So if you've been watching me, you hear me say this a lot. So he drops his mantle. Elisha responds and takes it. Now Jesus. Jesus dropped his mantle. Only it was too big for one person. He dropped his mantle on the world to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to talk to you about being spirit-filled. I have been spirit-filled for a long time, since I was like 23 years old. And I'm talking about being spirit-filled, praying in tongues, the dimension of the power of the Holy Spirit, seeing the miraculous, taking the gospel to the world, seeing it work in my children, my grandchildren, and now my great-grandchildren. So I love this mantle of the Holy Spirit. Now, you say, well, I didn't get it. But you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can be born again by repenting of your sins, inviting Jesus to come into your heart and be Lord of your life. And he will come in and he won't leave you or desert you. And I started that at 16, <laughs> I'm 89. Oh, oh, he's still there. But I got spirit-filled in my early 20s, 23. And I want to tell you, that anointing has grown. And the way I see it grow is when I get in the Bible, because the Holy Spirit reveals the truth. And so reading the Bible, a lot of times, you know, I read it through a couple times a year, and I think, oh, yeah, I've read that before. But then I read it again, and I get something new out of it because it's a living book, and the Holy Spirit is alive, and he makes it alive to me, and often for the occasion that I'm in. 
That's why I want you to read your Bible, but I also want you to be spirit-filled. Now, I know you're going to say, well, are you one of those people who speak in tongues? Yes, I am. I am, and I do it a lot. I do it in the morning. You know, I do it sometimes while I'm still in bed, and I pray in the Spirit. Now, the Bible says we don't know what we pray for, but the Spirit knows, and He makes revelation of it for us. So I do. I pray in tongues. And there are times when I've been in other countries and I was frightened, my life was threatened, and what did I do? Did I have a nervous breakdown? No, I didn't. I prayed in tongues. And so I see how powerful this is, but I have to share something with you. I just love this. When Jesus ascended, he sent the Holy Spirit. We know the day of Pentecost they were filled with the Spirit. We know from that time on, people have been filled with the Spirit, praying in tongues. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Elisha. You know, Elisha received Elijah mantle, the Holy Spirit. Now, Elisha died a natural death. Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. But not Elisha. He was buried. And the Bible tells us they threw a dead man in on him, and the dead man came to life. What? Don't underestimate what the Holy Spirit can do. And so I believe the Word and the power of the Holy Spirit open doors and bring the miraculous like nothing else. Now, you may say, I don't believe in speaking in tongues. Well, too late to tell me that. I've been doing it too long, you know. And so, and I know how wonderfully it works. And I know that when there are times when you're discouraged, you don't know what to do, and you pray in the Spirit. And someday on here, I'm going to give you just specific things about praying in the Spirit. But the Spirit is contagious. And so... It's so contagious that the body of Elisha literally had anointing in it. What? Did he have anointing in his bones? He must have. So I want you to think today, how powerful is the Spirit? I want you, if you're filled with the Spirit, don't neglect praying in the Spirit. You don't know what's ahead, and you don't know what's involved in that day. You don't know what's in your children or your grandchildren. And sometimes I just don't know what to pray. So I just say, all right, Lord, I'm just going to pray in the Spirit. And you know, you say, well, my denomination doesn't do that. But you know, Mary, if you read Acts 2, Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to the upper room. So she must have joined all that crowd. It said they were all filled with the Spirit. So, if you're a Catholic, (laughs) it fits you very much. And I want to encourage you, when you get up in the morning, take some time and pray in the Spirit. You can do it in the bathtub. You can do it in the shower. You can do it in, you know, just wherever you sit. But there's something about praying in the Spirit that brings revelation to me in the Bible. And you say, well, do you think everybody should have the Holy Spirit? Well, why did he say how much more would he give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So, what are we going to do? You say, I bet you're going to have us ask. I bet you're right. And could you get a recharge? I get recharges, and I really enjoy them. And they're wonderful, and I need them, because sometimes, who all the circumstances of the world and what's going on. I need recharges a lot, and so do you. So do you. So I'm going to pray with you today. Do you mind putting your hand on your heart again and say, Father, I know you love me. I belong to you. I'm born again. 
And I love being filled with the Spirit. I love praying in the Spirit because it takes me beyond natural knowledge into supernatural living. Thank you for supernatural living. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you've never spoken in tongues, let's just do it. You say, well, it just sounds like foolishness. It's a faith thing. So I'm going to pray, pray in the Spirit, and you can join me. Kashalara banda bora bora bokositi, tishtana maso broto bodevi. Likasira banda bara bandi. Do you know I sing in the Spirit? Kila bara bara boro, tishande baso. I used to really sing in the Spirit going to church and going to minister. Now, I'm so glad you watched today. And maybe you just have questions about it. You know, if you study the scriptures on diverse tongues and praying in tongues, it will really help you. It will help you be like a little child and just yield yourself to him. And I would say this to you today. Honey, have fun. Mm -hmm.